Hi, everybody. Kia ora koutou, and uh, welcome to my talk. Um, I am an academic asked to give a talk in an industry session, which is perfect. So that's exactly where I want to be. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a bit about what the HIT Lab has been doing for the last um, almost 20 years in really applied research. Um, but first, what is XR? So what is this thing? I've been a virtual reality researcher for a while, and then AR came around, and, and then everybody said MR. So, so, so how many would say extended reality? It's just a marketing tool. It's just a marketing um, tool that sort of Microsoft wanted to do a differentiator. OK, so could, could be. So some people say it's star. It's like a placeholder for all these other letters. So maybe. Um, so um, actually, I just call it excellent reality. That way, everybody's like, yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. Our goal is to make it excellent, right? Whether it's to be effective. So that's <laughs> um, Do they have a lot of money? Yeah, they do have a lot of money. Um, um, anyway, so again, this is actually really what everybody is about, is to try and make it excellent. Whether your goal is to make the perfect training simulator, or the perfect game, or what have you, it really is to make it excellent. So let's use that because that way everybody can agree and there's no confusion. Or have I confused things? Um, so the HIT lab itself is part of the University of Canterbury. That's not always known by everybody. So we're in the College of Engineering within the University of Canterbury. Um, we started in uh, 2002 by um, a guy, you might know. And Tom started the HIT lab at the University of Washington in Seattle, and then had this great idea about starting the HIT lab in New Zealand. And Mark was the perfect vehicle to do that. And, they, and, and together, and, and, and particularly Mark, has just made the HIT Lab an incredible uh, resource in New Zealand for a very long time. And it was originally started by the university, Christchurch NZ, the local um, council, and, and, and HIT Lab NZ um, LLC. So its goal was to spin off companies, to, was to transition technologies into the real world. Okay, so that's what the HIT Lab in Seattle did, 36 companies have been spun off. Uh, some of them lots of made lots of money. The vir virtual retinal display, for example, was, was created there to transition. It didn't quite work in the New Zealand context at that time. This was the problem. So if we fast forward a bit, um, today we are fully a, just a research lab at the university. Okay? But we still have the same mandate, which is to transition our technology out. So, we're the largest interaction lab in New Zealand. We have, uh, in a normal year, this not being a normal year, we have anywhere from 45 to 60 researchers working full time on, on human interface technology. Um, and we offer PhD and master's programs. So we currently have five staff at, at, at the lab. Um, uh, Haida gave a, a, a talk earlier today. Um, around applied immersive games. So she's the leader of this, this new initiative that we have. And we have people in human-robot interaction, people in augmented reality. I'm more of a virtual reality person and people that kind of in, in games production. Um, and so we really have this kind of multidisciplinary within the technology side kind of group. But we're at a university and we really um, collaborate a lot with psychology and sports science and, and all these other um, uh, departments around um, technology. And you can see there's a double meaning there, right? So we put people before technology, but we also put people before technology. And it really does start similar to um, the previous speakers. We start with the problem and not the solution. So what's, uh, what's, tell me about the person. Are they young, able, uh, disabled? What have you? What are they trying to do? What environment are they in? Are they moving around? Are they at work? Are they at school? Um, and then we pull in the right technologies to support that. So it's not a push where our VR lab trying to solve your problem, but it really is a pull type of approach. Um, we find that works best. Um, and so we understand the technologies really well. We understand the evaluation of the technologies for a particular uh, problem really well. What we don't know is the problem domain. So, so all these organizations bring their problems with, it, with them. They understand firefighting. They understand how to do um, phobia treatment, but they don't know how to navigate the technology um, and evaluation uh, types of things. So that's really where we fit. And what we develop is really vetted prototypes that we can demonstrably show A, B, and C have been tried, and B is the best for this particular thing. Thank you very much. And we can give them a prototype, but we can't give them a product, which is where industry comes in. 
what we'd like to do is to partner with industries and say, here's a vetted prototype that we've built. We, can, we have a customer, but we don't do customer service. We can't take, do that last bit to make it a product from, from a prototype. And that's really what the, the Applied Immersive Gaming Initiative is supposed to fill, is that we're, we're, we're trying to work much more closely with industry. Does that make sense? Okay. So we have master's programs and we have master-sized projects. So companies come to us with a brief of what they're looking for and we say, oh, that looks like a nine-month master's project. And we have a student who can work on that project and deliver something over that time, working very closely with user-centered design, working with the end users and so on to get it done. Um, we also have um, PhD projects. Again, people come to us with a brief. We say, well, that's more a, a gnarly problem. It's going to be more of a three-year commitment, um, but they have interim milestones that we deliver, uh, working prototypes. It's all done iteratively and so on. And so um, um, what this allows us to do is to scope when, when, when we interact, people can engage with us and they give us the problem. We tell them, here are the resources that we would need to produce a, a vetted prototype of what you're trying to do. Okay? Okay, good. Um, so the main research themes, as I said, is virtual reality, augmented reality. We do some human robot interaction work. So we don't build robots, but it's the human piece of it. So autonomous vehicles, flying taxis, um, uh, domestic robots, um, applied immersive gaming, and we do some um, immersive data visualization as well. And here's some, those are some of the sexy tools that we, that we work with. Um, so um, I'll go briefly over this because um, you, all oh, this audience knows this really well. So virtual reality we think of as replacing the real world um, and, um, and augmented reality or mixed reality mixes the real world and the virtual world. So AR typically starts with the real world as its base and then adds virtual content. Augmented virtuality starts with the virtual world as its base world and then adds real content such as your arms and things to that. Um, and, uh, but so this is clearly a continuum. Um, human robot interaction, I'm gonna skip this a little bit. Um, applied immersive gaming, again, for training. So these are games, this is kind of Haida's um, core area is around making games that are not only fun, but also um, have a purpose, which is to teach or, or uh, train somebody um, or to change their behavior in some way. So they have to be both fun and effective. So a lot of uh, applied games are fun, but not effective, or are effective, but nobody ever wants to play them because they're really not fun. And the key is to get these, um, both of these ingredients together. Um, we have heaps and heaps of kit. So we have a Virtuix Omni, um, we have a projection display, we have built our own multi-sensory feedback pods so we can do um, immersive visuals and audio through st standard headsets. We have a vibration floor that we can really shake like crazy. We have a surround wind system. We have a scent um, infusion system in that as well. And we have a wearable vest. And all of these work in concert. And the idea is that we don't have to do any of them perfectly because that's not how, not how we experience the real world. We need to make the experience perfect. And by balancing these technologies, we can um, put things over the top. That's what, we're, that, that's what we think anyway. Um, um, briefly about some of the project work. So there's three slides now of just kind of lists of projects. Um, we're working a lot on long-term immersion, so effective locomotion in VR, this notion of multi-sensory feedback and why should, why should we use it? Does it work? What does it work and which scenarios does it work in? Um, I would say um, about the future, we're just think about 7G. So we're working in a 7G network right now. Um, we're using um, digital triplets. Um, and um, we have the PlayStation 9 in-house. I'm, I'm just making a joke. It's, we're just doing more than the current, anyway. Um, <laughs> we have some funding from Snow Sports New Zealand to help train Olympic athletes to do their tricks uh, in COVID. They're not training very much. They can't go to events. So we're helping actually Snow Sports train uh, some of the, um, the current New Zealand Olympians. Uh, we're doing some indoor tracking. We're working very closely with the fire service to, again, do some very high risk, high reward uh, training for rural firefighters. Um, we're doing something called intimate VR, and it's not that kind of intimate. It is um, kind of patient doctor into intimate or prisoner lawyer uh, intimate or mental patient uh, therapist intimate where they, there needs to be a separation, but they really need to be intimate with each other to help each other out. Um, we have a lot of really interesting work on robot bullying and racism. Why are all robots white, for example? Um, um, yeah, I'll skip some of these. 
Um, superhuman sports is a, a relatively new area for us. So imagine augmented reality augments the human. So what could you do? In, this is a very interesting space to let people um, exercise more, um, uh, climbing or um, other dodgeball. Everybody seems to want to make dodgeball. So we have a lot of augmented dodgeball games. Um, and so I'll wrap it up. Um, so one is we're really looking for a postdoc right now. So if anybody's looking to come do, um, wants to come back and do some more work, um, we have some funding through this. Um, this is a $7.7 million investment by the New Zealand government in applied immersive games. Um, and so how to engage with us. So we have master students. Um, every February we have an intake of master students. Um, we have PhD students. Um, a lot of interns coming through. We do a lot of exchanges. We have done reverse sabbaticals. We've done normal sabbaticals. Um, um, corporate sponsorship coming in and, um, and engaging with us. Um, and consultancy. If you want us to come and help you um, think about some things, you can actually just hire the staff to, to come think about your problem, uh, work on your problem for a little bit. Um, and we have lots of scholarships. Did I mention scholarships? We have lots of scholarships. Um, and we're hiring a postdoc. Again, this is a one to two year appointment. And um, I have some other stuff, um, some 360 video shot, but I, in case I had more time, but I don't think I have much, much time. So I can um, maybe just let this play and 